Uh, my name is Dustin Booth, and uh, this is the pilot program of a new uh, show um, in which we are going to explore um, artists uh, in our local area and uh, kind of give them an opportunity to talk about their work and uh, also kind of showcase some of their work. Um, it's called Artists of the Nights. And uh, today we have the great fortune of being jo uh, joined by Mr. Joe Johnson. Uh, Joe, how are you this morning? I'm doing well, Dustin. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. Um, so yeah, Joe, how, um, a little bit about yourself. How long have you been, well, how long have you been making music in the Pikes Peak region? Um, I would say about 16 years. 16 years, okay. Mm -hmm. I remember meeting you probably about 2004, so. Yeah, so about, about the, that was about the time I came here, yeah, from Mississippi. And then uh, I started making music in Mississippi in probably 1997. Uh, do you mind talking about that a little bit? How did you how did you get involved in music? What was your muse? What was kind of your push? Hmm. Well, uh, I come from a musical family. My grandfather was a country music singer and performer at the Grand Ole Opry and uh, country music uh, radio disc jockey for years and years. Uh, pretty well known in South Mississippi. And um, my father is a drummer and bass player, and uh, my mom is a piano player. So they met at a recording session. Uh, for a group called the Gospel Pages, and uh, you know, I came a little while later. So, uh, my other grandpa is, is also a radio DJ, was a radio DJ, um, and made music as well. So, I come from a long line of uh, musical people. That's fantastic. So, it is it is in your blood, and it was in your environment as well. Yes. Yep. Definitely. Uh, grew up around uh, family gatherings, uh, sitting around the piano. You know, my mom plays and the rest of the family sings. My uh, aunt was also a session singer. Uh, so great um, harmonies and my cousins and the uh, rest of my family, my sister. So we all uh, would sit around and sing together and uh, listen to music a lot together. And uh, it's just always a part of my life. Awesome. Um, and so at this point, um, how many albums have you put out? Uh, well, I've put out, um, well, I've released three uh, hard copy albums uh, as a solo artist. Um, and then I released three with the band Creating a New Sense. Um, I've released a couple of more that are online only and a few singles. So uh, several releases over the years. And you've been, uh, and you know, probably one of your strengths or something that you've been very active in, obviously, is uh, is live performances. Oh yes, definitely. Uh, I've spent many, many years on the road. Uh, I've played, I mean, for probably five years, I played at least twice a week, every week. Oftentimes more than that. But, uh, yeah, you know, I've definitely logged in a couple of thousand shows or more in my career with different bands as well uh, as my own stuff. You know, I also play with Grant Saban and a lot of shows with him and uh, some other bands over the years. So, uh, I've spent a lot of time on, on stage and uh, a lot of time in the corners of uh, dark nowhere bars and <laughs> everywhere else, street corners, anywhere, anybody to listen to. Well, and you've, uh, I, I would say you spread a lot of joy um, by doing so. I hope so. <laughs> I've, uh, I've uh, received a lot of joy doing it, so I hope it's spread too. So we're going to go ahead and take this opportunity now. Uh, Joe, Joe and I are going to listen to uh, so, uh, six of his songs. Um, these songs were actually all recorded here at the Knights of Columbus Hall uh, in downtown Colorado Springs on July 23rd, uh, 2020. Uh, I definitely want to thank Josh Schmidt for his fantastic uh, audio recording that he did. Um, he really, he really did an amazing knockout job uh, capturing the sound and Joe's performance, as you will see, is amazing. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and start with Morgantown Creek. I remember just shy of 17 Way back yonder in the tall pine trees A 
Pretty little girl stole a kiss from me Down on the banks of the Morgantown Creek Ooh. Her mama said call her Anne Marie She's pretty as a peach hanging low on the tree She sparkled like the sun setting on the sea The two blue eyes staring right through me Right through me Spring gives way to the summer day Laying in the grass with the willow shade There's an AM radio humming out a song Lord, oh baby, I'm singing along Singing along. If I could, I'd stay this way forever. All my life seeking shelter from the weather. I have longed ever since I can remember just to be free to be. Joe, uh, tell us a little bit about Morgantown Creek. Uh, well, the song, uh, well, Morgantown Creek is a small creek that runs through uh, the town in South Mississippi where I grew up, uh, Morgantown, uh, which is a real out of the way community in uh, Marion County, um, a few miles outside of the big city of Foxworth, which does have a post office. Morgantown does not have a post office anymore. Uh, and yeah, there wasn't a heck of a lot to do uh, when you grew up in a town like that. And so uh, going to the creek was one of the big things that we always looked forward to um, as little kids and teenagers and young adults. And the, the fun just changed the older you got, but it was still a place to have a good time. So, What were kind of some of your choices when you were composing the song, when you were, when you were uh, kind of deciding how you wanted to convey the song uh, musically? Um, well, you know, I think, uh, I think the chord progression probably came about first on that one. Um, and, uh, I think the idea was to try, I like writing bluegrass music. Um, uh, I write all kinds of music, bluegrass, blues, gospel, rock and roll, um, folk music, you know, whatever. Um, but I like writing bluegrass music and I have as far back as I've been writing. And I wanted to uh, kind of switch up the chord progression and timing a little bit just to make it interesting. And, um, you know, the first time around that progression, I just, I mean, I felt it immediately. I said, oh, this is something I can work with here. And um, the opportunity to write about Morgantown is always there. So, uh, you know, just kind of perfect combination, I guess really liking the chords and really want to write about the subject. The only thing I really think about when I'm writing is the lyrics. Uh, I want the melody to be good, obviously. Um, the chord progression is, you know, something like in with Morgantown Creek, for instance, you know, it started with the chord progression and I was really trying to do something a little more interesting there. Uh, most of the time, you know, it's, it's all about the lyrics really first and foremost, and if the lyrics are good, you know, I feel pretty happy about it. head is ringing, there's a pounding in my brain, I can't find no peace, no shelter from the rain, this road I've traveled, gave so much of myself, won't miss me too much when I'm gone, to move on to someone else. I was born in the winter, the year of the horse. I was 
baptized in the river in the name of the Lord. Slept down in the gutter, I cried out to the wind. I had to walk so many roads just to know where I've been. Someone ride my mama, tell her to shape my mean. I'm just short of Birmingham, not too far from breaking down again. There ain't too much a man to know that a man can do. Unless a man is willing to face up to the truth There ain't no way around it Catches up to us all The same folks you pass on your way up You pass again when you fall Someone ride my mama Tell her the shape I I'm just short of Birmingham, not too far from breaking down again. Toward the end of my Morgantown album release tour, which was a like three month long tour where um, I was coming and going, mostly going. Any musician knows there's some rough nights and uh, I had one of those in a town called Dothan, Alabama. I got to the show and, you know, played it, and there's maybe three or four people there, you know, that didn't know who I was sitting at the bar. And it was one of those nights where uh, the bartender came up to me after it was, a, I was supposed to play three sets, and I played two sets. And at the end of my second set, the bartender came up and said, If you want, I'll go ahead and pay you and you can go home. I've gotten a pretty cheap hotel room, you know, and I'm sitting there and uh, I remember the bathroom door had all these messages uh, <laughs> written on it from various desperate people who had <laughs> stayed in this room before me over the years. And, um, uh, just kind of a rough night and uh, so I remember sitting there and I couldn't sleep and I was you know, missing uh, my family and home and just kind of burnt out and over it. And, thought to myself I should write a song about this feeling that I have right now and uh, instead of doing that I drank a bottle of whiskey and I listened to a bunch of Blaze Foley <laughs> and I feel like people that anybody that spends a lot of time um, doing what they do and away from the people that they love to do it whether it's musician truck driver uh, soldier overseas whatever you know anybody that kind of knows that feeling uh can probably relate to the song and, and where I'm coming from with it. Um, I knew that when I got into, you know, the business of going on the road and playing music, um, you know, I understood that that was part of the life. And, you know, to be honest with you, uh, I always embraced that part of the life. I feel like it's fuel for songs and um, I feel like it's uh, even more important than that. It's fuel for empathy. I think that's the most important human characteristic there is. So um, I've always been one to, uh, you know, embrace hard times as best that I can and know that, you know, they only last for a season. And uh, on the other end of it, you can choose to take that and make something beautiful that works out of it. and dive bar saloons If I had to count on the in crowd around me I'd starve to death far too soon Singing my tears for tips and beer Hoping someone will hear Nobody listens to the heartbreaks no more 
And ain't no place in this world for an old troubadour Cause I'm too old to die young Too young to listen to the answers Blowing in the wind And I'm three hours from Cheyenne or Laramie, Wyoming Where I know that I'll find a friend I'd like to stay here a little bit longer But that highway won't let me stay home I gambled and lost, so let's settle the score There ain't no place in this world for an old troubadour Quit drinking this week Two times already To tell me Third time's a charm Charm and beguiling Means you're only lying To yourself and it brings Nothing but harm I've worn out my welcome In certain circles the Things I have said Or I've done so I just say goodnight, show myself to the door There ain't no place in this world for an old troubadour Cause I'm too old to die young Too young to listen to the answers blowing in the wind And I'm three hours from Cheyenne or Laramie, Wyoming Where I know that I'll find a friend I'd like to stay here a little bit longer But that highway won't let me stay home I gambled and lost, so let's settle the score There ain't no breaking even for an old troubadour Yes, I gambled and lost, so let's settle the score There ain't no place in this world for an old troubadour Hey, old Troubadour, uh, I love that song. Tell us a little bit about uh, kind of where you were at and what you were thinking. I mean, obviously, I think this sto uh, song is fairly self-explanatory um, as you as you listen to the speak, story. It kind of speaks for itself. Uh, it's an autobiographical tale. Um, age old feeling that, you know, getting through the hard times as a songwriter, I do feel like, you know, with the musical landscape, kind of the way it is, uh, you know, the guy with the acoustic guitar becomes harder and harder to, you know, be heard. And um, that is what it is. Uh, you know, I, I don't spend a lot of time really bemoaning the way things are or should be, you know, you just do what I do. But and I don't know, some people might think, you know, it's it's like a, a defeated, a song about being defeated, but no, that, that, that's definitely not the case. There may not be uh, a place in this world for old troubadours, but uh, I've never been too concerned about finding a place in the world. I think people have to be true to who they are, you know, and any, any artist worth their weight will tell you that, that, you know, if you want to make art that matters <laughs> or music that means something then be sincere about it you know or the old saying write what you know you know yeah. applies um yeah. in all situations and be yourself yeah always there's nobody else you can be really that's true that's true you can spend a lot of time trying but you're never you be honest that. with yourself there's <laughs> no one you can be but yourself <laughs> <laughs> that's true all right uh joe let's uh let's move on to what do you think? How about uh, the death of Mary and St. Peter? Yeah, great. Let's do it. Let's do it. Got to live, live before you die. Got to live, live. 
before you die, you got to live, live before you die. Head on up to your home in the sky. St. Peter was a gambler down in Natchez. Rolled his dice with the lads and the lasses. Drank his liquor from high farm glasses. Drank it till the sun come up. He wore a double breasted tailor made three piece suit. Kept a knife in his pocket and a gun in his boot. But he couldn't get to it when it came time to shoot. The gambler ran clean out of luck. Mary Maggie was a lady of the night. If you need a thing done, then she could do it just right. If you had enough money, man, she just might love you till the sun come up. Peter couldn't help himself when he saw her standing there holding that pink carnation flower. Felt his knees buckle underneath the power of the lady and the way she looked. He had Judas's silver and a gunny sack. Wanted in a crooked game of blackjack. But Judas headed home and now he's coming back to get what the gambler took. The death of Mary and St. Peter. Um, I think there's probably a lot to unpack in that song. <laughs> yeah, there is. I really like being lyrical. Um, I really like telling stories. Uh, before I ever learned to play guitar, um, I wrote, uh, well, I wrote poetry and short stories first. And uh, I felt like uh, this was kind of a universal tale. Um, there's love and lust and um, jealousy and gambling and drinking and chasing women and all things that I know a lot about. When you focus on kind of universal feelings, you know, and universal things that everybody can kind of understand or relate to, I feel like it it's, makes it a lot easier. I think something that's very interesting about the song, too, is kind of your, your choice of uh, antagonists and protagonists. Well, for one, I feel like when, when you're referencing characters like St. Peter or Judas or you know, Mary, that makes it easier for the listener to kind of imagine something. Because, you know, a lot of people are, you know, like me, maybe uh, brought up in church or something, you know, and so they have kind of these already ideas from when they were a kid of uh, St. Peter was or Judas was. If anybody's listening has ever had a chance to go to Natchez, Mississippi, uh, they would know, and if you haven't, I would highly suggest if you get the chance to go visit Natchez. Um, very cool old town, a lot of history there, good and bad. And there's a place called the Natchez Under the Hill Saloon, which is right on the river, and on the other side of the river is uh, Louisiana. And uh, so the town has a, a long history, especially around the uh, Under the Hill Saloon, of gambling and murders and prostitution and all the things that you would expect in a big city like New Orleans when I was trying to picture it in my mind because I need to put myself there too I need to be able to see this whole thing play out myself or I can't write it so the first thing I did was put myself in Natchez in probably the 1800s you know when something like this would have happened well cool um so I guess it's kind of sticking with the biblical theme let's go to uh, St. Christopher There's a little white line trying to walk me. Got me a woman, she don't always need me. Used to have lots of friends gathered around. They've all gone, it's just me now. I had a bubble of nickel. 
kept in my pocket I kept it full luck till I spent it all nothing Ain't no use to look back with a frown I was young back then, I've grown old and now Oh mama, don't you cry for me I'll be home just as fast as I can be Oh, St. Christopher, pray for me Help me cross the river, won't you please? No, I ain't never been one to dwell on regrets. There's too many mistakes I ain't made yet. It's a safe bet with your last dollar. I'll make them all come hella high water. Oh, mama, don't you cry for me. I'll be home just as fast as I can be Oh, St. Chris, pray for me Help me cross the river Well, St. Christopher is a, a Catholic uh, patron saint of uh, travelers. And, and you know, that's kind of, yeah, back to the uh, idea of people being kind of able to relate to those types of characters, strangely, uh, you know, in some ways uh, easier than um, some character named Bob. Uh, but, you know, for me, it's like... Uh, the idea of um, I love the idea of uh, a patron saint of travelers. I love the idea of some cat that's looking out for people like me. You know, it started a couple of years ago. I started having uh, the check engine light come on in my truck, and I kept pulling over, and I would get checked out. It was always the same false read. Um, but every time it would come on, when you're in the middle of Nebraska, and you know you you get worried. So um, when I was down in New Mexico, I was uh, had played in Taos and I went out to Royo Seco, which I love to do. Uh, I went into a little shop there and um, they had these little uh, Saint cards. And, um, oh yeah, little medallions? Yeah, little medallions and cards and stuff. And uh, so anyway, uh, I found one of Saint Christopher and it fit just right over the check engine light on the dashboard of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I can no longer see <laughs> And so I problem say, solved. Problem solved. So for for a while, for the next year or so, I was looking at St. Christopher every, every every mile. You know, one night I was uh, played a show in Kansas City, and uh, after the show, uh, I remember I was I had a place room in, in the bunkhouse upstairs above the bar, and there was like another bar, another band staying there. Well, you know, it's only a few hours, and so maybe I'll just start driving now. So, you know, I set out across Kansas and, uh, you know, it always seems like <laughs> such a good idea until you're halfway through it. <laughs> and, and, uh, and you realize how big Kansas is. <laughs> it's a lot bigger than it looks on the map. Um, and so uh, right, I was around four o'clock in the morning, you know, I was kind of start doing the head bobbing thing. So I'm like, man, I, you know, I'm going to have to pull over. So uh, I've spotted a truck stop and pulled over and, uh, you know, parked kind of in the back and climbed in the back of the truck and laid down for a little rest and yeah I wasn't able to sleep and I laid there for probably close to an hour and uh, trying to trying to get some rest and couldn't do it and so uh, I ended up sitting up going inside getting a cup of coffee came back and dropped the tailgate and just kind of sat on the tailgate and uh, yeah, the melody for that song came to mind and mama don't you cry for me I'll be home fast as I can be. That was the first thing that came to mind. And so I grabbed my guitar and just started playing while the trucks were rumbling and watching the sun start to come up uh, over the plains. And uh, man, by the time the sun was in the sky, I had that song written. But it's made for the highway, you know, if you're listening to it, it's made for driving that interstate. <laughs> awesome. Well, cool. Um, we got, I think we got one more song to go. Uh, and, uh, it seems like kind of a fitting one to, to kind of finish up with. Uh, on and on it goes. Let's do it.
Sometimes strikes, sometimes gutter, sometimes you beat the cow, sometimes squeeze the udder, sometimes I use oil, sometimes I use butter. How come everybody can't love one another? You tell me because I don't know, but it seems like it'd be a better way to go. Instead of running around scared of things that we don't know, we turn on the TV to our favorite show. It's the one about the woman and the fella and the friends and the hilarious shenanigans that they get in. One loves the other, the other loves another, and on and on it goes. On and on it goes. Like a Midwest prairie road. It's a fantastic waste of all my precious time and all. Well, I heard a friend talk about the current situation of the world as he heard it on the radio station. He said, they said, everything's going down the drain and that I better get right before it gets too late. I said, I believe you underestimate this sovereign old world ain't going away for five billion years till the sun burns up. So pour some more wine in your solo cup. Turn your radio up, put your windows down. Play your music loud for the whole damn town Till the cops show up and they haul you out And on and on it goes On and on it goes Like a Midwest prairie road It's a fantastic waste of all my precious time And on song to kind of end the whole this whole uh, experience on it's uh, fun it's hopeful yeah like me <laughs> yeah i always introduce that song by saying this is a song about everything i feel like the song is i'm attempting to explore um our fascination as a culture with being entertained right now there's so much craziness going on in the world between politics and religions and you know social action and COVID-19 and control systems and all these things that people you know keep talking about and are you know um, kind of controlling the zeitgeist I guess the, you know the culture right now and all of that stuff is different all those things are they're not all the same they're all different issues but they all kind of become the same thing on the television and they all become the same thing on YouTube. They all become the same thing in, you know, the entertainment complex <laughs> that is, you know, everything that surrounds us in our society. So I feel like, you know, we as a culture and it's, and obviously I'm an entertainer. So the risk of, uh, you know, shooting myself in the foot, um, you know, I, I also feel like as an artist, you know, that benefits from that culture. Um, one of my jobs is to hold a mirror up to that culture and, you know, so people can kind of look back on it. Joe, thank you so much. Uh, well, you know, all good things must come to an end, my friend. It's true. Except, on, for, our, except for our friendship, which will never end. That's right. And on it, and on and on it goes, man. And on and on it goes. I love you. <laughs> all, right. all right. I love you too, Joe. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.